Welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. In the beginner series, I've been able to offer to you a number of power tools that offer a wide variety of different type of projects that you can do. With just a few power tools in your shop, you can accomplish a lot of different types of projects. You'd probably be surprised. But today I wanna to add one more to that list of tools, and that is gonna be the circular saw. Now, one of the things about the circular saw is that, quite frankly, it really hasn't changed a whole lot as far as design over the last, literally, several decades until these last few years when the design is starting to change a little bit. So today, I want to be able to show you some old school circular saws that I have, and I also want to show you a new design that I have in my shop. So let's get started. Now, if you go to any of the big box stores and take a look at the selection of the circular saws, many of them look very, very similar. Most of them have a seven and a quarter inch blade. Some will have a six and a half, and some will be a little bit smaller, but they all are designed really to work the same way. Now, this first circular saw that I wanna show you is really an antique. This saw is actually over 50 years old. Now you'll also notice up here by the switch, it does not have any safety device at all. It's either on or it's off. The only safety feature that this saw actually has is the blade guard itself. Now this saw was actually made back in the 70s. And quite frankly, if I needed parts for it, I could not even buy parts for this saw. But for many, many years, this saw was my go-to saw that I absolutely love the design of it, and it has worked extremely well. In fact, when I was first starting out, this saw became my table saw. That's right, yes, I used this saw as a table saw for actually a number of years. And then from there, I purchased one of these skill saws, and this too is a very old saw. But this one does have the safety feature on it where you can use it either left-handed or right-handed to be able to prevent you from accidentally turning on the saw. And of course, it has the safety guard for the blade. And we're gonna go into each of these saws in a moment to be able to cover some more of the different features and how to use it. But I also wanna show you one other saw that's a more modern design that I think is gonna be a very nice saw. Now, when I was at the big box store, I only saw a couple of saws designed this way. Now, this saw is actually designed completely different. Now, this saw is actually made by Tack Life, and this has a four and three quarter inch blade. And you notice the blade is on the left side as compared to the other two that I showed you where the blade was on the right side. And I'm gonna show you some of the benefits to that on having it on one side versus the other. But this saw does have the safety feature with the guard. It also has the safety feature of being able to prevent it from accidentally being turned on and off. And it also has a laser that's mounted up top to be able to help you with the um, getting accurate cuts, as well as a dust port to allow you to get that dust up and out and away from the saws. Something that these other two did not have. Now this panel saw that I have in the shop, I've actually mounted a circular saw permanently to that. And this is where it stays. Now I have a little box that's made over on top of the blade and that's allowed me to be able to capture the dust and get the dust out and away from my project and from circulating in the shop. But the circular saw is an extremely versatile and useful tool. Now, a lot of people today have what's called a track saw. And basically, it's like a circular saw that's mounted to a track so that you can make very accurate cuts. And if you think about it, that track saw, it has its roots in 
nothing more than a circular saw. In fact, there's actually a number of videos out there that show people how to make a track saw from a circular saw. It's really quite easy. One of the very common ways that people use to cut a straight line with the circular saw is to use the square. This, and this speed square can sit right on here and it gives you good support out here before you even get to the wood to be able to support it and you can make your cut. Now, if you notice before I started the saw, I actually looked over on the right hand side at the blade before turning it on. I didn't even realize that because it's just out of habit that I do it. And this saw was actually designed so it had plenty of room to be able to allow for that. When I pick up and look at this saw, it's designed completely different. This area here is very, very close to the bottom of the motor and it will not allow me to be able to push this through. If I push this through, it hits right there and it does not allow me to do that. So this technique would not work with this saw. Now I want to use this new design saw with the speed square and be able to make that cut. I'm also going to use the vacuum attachment to be able to make it where there's no sawdust at all to speak of. Now if you look over here, there are just very few little pieces as compared to the last time that had sawdust everywhere. So this little dust port works extremely well. Now if you look at the video, yes it does throw out some sawdust out the front, but not nearly as much as those other two saws do. Now on the circular saw, you have the ability to tilt the blade. In this very old saw, you could just tilt it to whatever degree that you needed and then clamp it back in position. And it worked very well. So I'll set that, pull it back. And I also have a height gauge right here also for the blade to be able to stick through the wood. And I can loosen this knob and be able to adjust that. And this is the little indicator right there that you could actually set it. Now let's take a look at the other saw. Now on this saw, you adjust the tilt up here with this little wing nut, and you can tilt it same way, and that works out quite nicely. And back here on the back side, you have a lever that you can adjust the height of the blade again. Set the height that you want, and clamp it down. Now this one does not have the thickness on there, which I don't like that, but it's really kind of a minor inconvenience. Now not having that scale on there to be able to show the thickness of the wood that you're cutting is really not a big deal because for the most part, what you're going to be able to do is adjust it with the blade itself. And the first thing, of course, unplug the saw and then you can release this handle and then raise up the guard and then you can move this any depth that you want to be able to have it go thinner or deeper of your cut. And once you get it to the depth that you want, just lock it back down and you're ready to cut. Now on this saw, let's take a look at this one. I'm going to remove the dust port for the moment and get the hose out of the way. And on this one, you got a lever right here and the same thing that will allow you to tilt it. And you have the angles right here showing. And when you get it set the way you want it, you can just put it right back. On the side, you also have the uh, inches listed here to be able to set it to whatever depth that you want. So this would be zero. And then as this comes up, that would be one inch, one and a half inches, and then you can just lock that back down. So easy to get to. Now this handle actually unscrews and comes off. So if you don't need that, you can just remove it. These other saws 
do not have that option. There are no other fancy things that I can really say about that. The sawdust is designed to be able to shoot out here on this one. On this saw, the same thing. The sawdust is designed to shoot out here. But quite frankly, on both of these saws, there's a lot of sawdust that comes out here, but there's also a lot of sawdust that's thrown out in front as well. And of course, on this saw, you have the dust port right here that captures, as you've seen, most of the sawdust. And when it comes time to change the blade, this ha does have the tool built in so that you can put it on here and loosen and replace it. Now, the only thing about this saw is you do not have any type of a stop. You're gonna have to put a little piece of wood in there to keep this from turning to be able to open this up, unscrew it, and be able to put a new blade on. This saw is the same way. It does not have any type of a stop to be able to keep this blade from turning. You would need to have the wrench carried separately. There are no places to be able to put and store the tool. And then you would use the same thing. You would just use the wrench to loosen this nut and you'd have a piece of scrap wood to be able to hold this blade from being able to turn. Now, when you have this saw, you do have this wrench for the Allen um, hex wrench to be able to go in. And it also says on here to unlock and lock. So to be able to unlock this, you would actually turn it to the right. So this is left-handed threads. And that's very important to remember because if you just think of it as a traditional saw blade, you're gonna be trying to turn it to the left to loosen it and you're actually going to be tightening it. I wanna get that up in the camera so that you can see it. Now on the other side, there is a button right here that you can push to be able to lock that in place and that blade will not turn. Now this laser works very well. And I'm gonna put it down here where you can see this. You can see that laser line, it's a very thin, sharp line. And if you put that on your wood, you can see exactly where you're gonna be cutting. So I'll turn that off. So if you have the pencil line here, and that's where you want it to be able to cut, you can turn the laser on, line it up directly with that line, and you're ready to cut a very accurate line right over on top of that pencil line and it'll be a perfect cut. And just to be able to show you, I'm gonna go ahead, leave the laser on. We're gonna plug in the attachment again and plug in the saw. Now I'm all ready to be able to cut. And you always turn the saw on before you come make contact with the wood. And now you can just be able to follow that laser line with that pencil line directly on top, and it does make a perfect cut. So let's get up close so that you can see it. Now, if you look real close, you can see that pencil line right there, and that laser was directly on top of that, and you can see how that was a perfect cut. Now, another nice thing, you do have this little T-square that you can actually slide into this one. And by just loosening this screw right there, that will slide through, and then you can set this to any dimension that you want. And again, it has a scale on here, so you can just slide it over. For an example, that would be right at the two inch line. And then you can tighten that down and you would be able to cut a two inch board. And now this can go all the way up to, I like it being over here. So I would say realistically, you could cut about five and a half inches as far as the width and you would be just fine with that. Once you get it outside of this slot, it's gonna be less stable. Now this saw has that capability here. And I'm just gonna slip this one in. So this does have the same capability and there used to, there, there was used to be a little set screw right here that held it in place. 
and you could set that up to be able to do the same thing. Now this saw that's actually much, much older does not have that feature. Well, actually, yes, it does. That feature is actually right there. Do I have the little T-square that goes for this saw? <laughs> no, I don't. But this is a little threaded uh, hole right here that I could actually put a screw in there. <clears throat> and if I could find a little T-square, that could fit in there. And then, yes, I could use that. And this would be able to fit in on either side. And the same thing with this one. Now this is capable of slipping in from either side. And on this saw, as I showed you a moment ago, it could slip in. It can slip in on this side, just like that. Or you could, if you needed to, turn it around and slip it in on this side as well. And then just tighten it down once you get your measurement set. Now, when you're working with power tools, please grab that manual, especially when you're first starting out and you're new to this hobby. Grab that manual and read through it. Make sure that you read and understand everything in that manual. And don't forget the safety part. These saws can hurt you. And I don't want to see anybody hurt. Now, we've covered some of the basic features and benefits of the saw today, but we have not covered all of the different safety aspects. So please read and understand those safety features. And always, when you're working around that saw, if it does not need to be plugged in, unplug it before you do any adjustments to the saw. And then when you plug it in, make sure that your hands and fingers are well away from that blade. Safety is the most important thing that you can do when you're working around the wood and these power tools. Now, this is just a quick introduction of the circular saws and some of the features and benefits of them. And it's also a look back in history on some very, very old saws versus the new design saw. And now the one that I have is by Tack Life. I'm going to put a link to that down in the description should you decide to purchase it. And I'm also going to put links in the description below for the more traditional type saws. So you can take a look at that. But I do hope that you consider adding a circular saw to your list of tools that you can use in the shop. It will add quite a bit of versatility in the type of projects that you can make. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my Patreons for helping to support this channel. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you. If you'd like to join my Patreon family, the link is in the description below. And I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. Thank you.